Many people went west to get rich, such as the 49ers um, and people moving on to the homesteaders to make money through farming, but they weren't all successful and some of them wanted an, an easier way to make money, so they turned to crime. And crime uh, was very easy to get away with in the West because the, the distances and the spaces between settlements were so large there were lots of places to, to get lost. And also there was no law and order there. The government hadn't set up any sheriffs or marshals offices in any of these uh, communities which had sprung up. So there's nobody to catch them. And so um, there were many bank robberies, um, train robberies, the, the railroad having just been finished in the early 60s and these trains passing through thousands of miles of wilderness were a very easy target. Uh, people would steal each other's horses, these horse rustlers, especially to the um, Native Americans, the horses were very valuable too. Uh, claim jumping would happen in the mining communities where they'd say, no, I'm going to dig for gold here. No, I said I was here first. Um, and also there were stagecoach robberies as well. Um, and there were also other um, crimes which were, were more specific to the West. Um, shootouts and shootings were, were, were a big problem. Um, there was this feeling, uh, this sort of uh, code of honour of the West, the way you need to get your revenge. And everybody carried weapons, uh, mainly to protect themselves against horse rustlers and perhaps um, aggressive Native Americans. And so shootings were quite frequent. Uh, racial attacks were quite frequent as well. A large Chinese community had been used to build a railroad and there was uh, a lot of animosity towards them. But other nationalities had come from Europe, such as the Russians or the Germans or the Irish, and these uh, and, and the, the ex-slaves who had moved onto the plains as well. And prejudice combined, combined with uh, hard economic realities uh, created a lot of racial tension. There was also fence cutting, horse rustlers cutting through this new invention of barbed wire fences to steal um, people's horses or people's cattle, um, or maybe just to let them go to, to get back at somebody for revenge. Now, um, before the US government could do anything about this, um, there were some organisations that, that, that tried to help. So the Pinkertonian Detective Agency, for example, would hire out its services to stagecoach companies to try and find people who had committed robberies or, or to protect the stagecoaches. The Texas Rangers uh, down in Texas um, would offer their services to try and maintain law and order there. Uh, there were also vigilante groups would spring up, such as the Miners Committees, um, where they would take the law into their own hands and often um, would uh, carry out harsh punishments such as lynching uh, and not give people a fair trial, um, which was a real concern. The US government was slow to act. The sparsely populated West meant that there were few voters there and therefore the US government thought, well, you know, they're not going to vote for us, so why should we uh, enforce law and order? But as populations grew in the West, um, as the economic benefits of the West became clear, they began to take action to enforce more law and order. US Marshals were appointed to each state to oversee uh, law and order in that area and judges were appointed to tour the West and to make sure that um, justice and fair trials were carried out, although some did have a reputation of dishing out um, uh, harsh punishments such as uh, the hanging judges who would know. Um, and then at a local level, town marshals would be elected by, um, by a community and they would, uh, they're the ones who maintain law and order. And the sheriffs would look after the prison and catch people um, uh, who weren't paying their taxes. Uh, but it was very slow and a very hard process to impose law and order on the wild.